Hello there, I'm a film student and I'm going to share my opinion on We will explore five categories and score each of them out of ten. Total them all up and that's the overall score of the film. We'll also be analysing the psychopathy in this film and how accurate it really is, but anyway, on to the story. Right, let's break it down. So we kick things off with some establishing shots to set the scene, as our Texan narrator fills us in. We meet our bad guy, Anton Chigurh, who's packing a CO2 tank as his weapon of choice. Chigurh gets taken to the station by the deputy, but once he gets the all clear, things take a dark turn. He uses his own cuffs to take the deputy out in a way I cannot show on YouTube. Now we switch to our protagonist, Moss, out hunting in the desert. He stumbles upon a huge stash of cash that belongs to the cartel, and Moss decides to stash this cash in his and his wife's trailer. But, of course, the cartel come looking for their money and Moss barely escapes. Meanwhile, Sugar stops for gas in the middle of nowhere, setting up one of the best scenes in the entire film. I won't spoil it, but seriously, look up the coin toss scene after this video, please. <laughs> Anyway, it turns out Shigur knows about the cash and is on a mission to kill whoever's got it. Sheriff Bell, another good guy, is on his tail. He's the voiceover guy from the beginning. And after a nail-biting showdown, an officer manages to catch up to Moss just before Shigur. Needless to say, Anton is not too pleased about that. And eventually, Moss meets his end when Shigur finally catches up to him. And Sheriff Bell arrives just a tad too late. Lastly, Shigur pays a deadly visit to Moss's wife, Carla. And after a close encounter with the cops, he stumbles off into the unknown, and we're left wondering if he'll ever get caught. So, to sum it up, the story can be a bit confusing, with scenes jumping around in time without telling you they have. But the pacing is spot on, and the script is pure art. Shigur's dialogue, cold as ice yet dripping with menace, is just masterful. And I could be wrong, but the CO2 canister he uses is also used to kill cattle on farms, which could be seen as a metaphor for his victims just being cattle to slaughter. The characters are richly drawn, giving for a gripping tale, so overall, 8 out of 10. Alright, let's do something different in this review. I'm focusing solely on Javier Bardem's role as Anton Chigurh. Sure, Tommy Lee Jones and Kelly McDonald were great, but let's be honest, you're all here for the psychopath. So, a group of psychiatrists in 2018 looked through 400 films and identified 126 psychopathic characters. Can you guess who's most accurate? Yep, Anton Chigurh. But why, you ask? Well, he, he nails the whole no empathy thing. He kills anyone who inconveniences him or is accountable, which is a classic psychopath trait. The lack of empathy, not the murder part. <laughs> Take the first kill, the young deputy. A psychiatrist broke it down, claiming everything from the way Sugar approaches and kills him to casually washing his hands afterwards without a hint of distress, screams psychopath. sugar has got his own rules on how and why to kill, which are classic psychopath traits. Barden does an amazing job. So for his stellar performance and the rest of the talented cast, I'm giving it a 10 out of 10. So what I love about this film is that they stuck to natural lighting, which makes the bad guy feel super real, you know? And that's the genius part. Because they seem real, it makes you actually care about these characters' lives. <laughs> and let me tell you, it works like a charm. There's no shame in showing the killer either, and it does make total sense, because this guy does most of his killing in broad daylight. You see every bit of him. The scenes are shot, paced, and acted so well that it builds up this killer tension. But here's the kicker. In that big fight scene, they amp up the fear factor. It's pitch black. You can't see the bad guy, and those long, tense shots keep you on edge. Colours are on point throughout the film, and they really know how to play with shadows to highlight different characters and their positions. My only gripe? I would have loved to see more colour variety to show different times in the story. They stuck to those dry western colours, which is cool, but I would have liked to see them use colour to tell time more. So, overall, I'll give the cinematography a solid 8 out of 10. Now let's chat about the sound part, and if you've seen the film, even as a casual viewer, I know this is probably the part you're itching to get into. Here's the deal. Throughout the entire film, there's no soundtrack. No music. Nothing. Why? Well, silence is their secret weapon for cranking up the tension. Take the coin flip scene, for example. It's slow, with tons of pauses in between lines, and each moment of silence amps up the tension. You're left hanging, wondering what will happen because you know what this man can do. In many films, they use this thing called non-diegetic sounds to build up tension. So there's loud rises, drum booms and strings, but here, nothing. No heads up, no hints. You're left to imagine and anticipate the action by yourself, and especially with this character in play, it is a tension fest. Sure, No Country for Old Men isn't reinventing the wheel when it comes to silence in films. I mean, plenty have dabbled in it, but what sets this one apart is how it makes silence a prominent factor in this film, a key player. So while this factor is a stylish and smart choice, it doesn't add much else to the film other than immense tension. So for that, it's just a 7 out of 10. 
First off, I swear I won't go on about that coin scene again. <laughs> um, but onto the effects. Deacons, the master, uses light to give us that creepy and eerie vibe. Characters lit up from behind, faces in the shadows. But we've touched on that before, so let's get into the nitty gritty of the production design side of things. Fun fact, during filming they were spending so much on fake blood, roughly $800 a gallon, according to co-director Joel Cohen. Why? Well, imagine scenes with extras lying in the sun for hours on end, covered in fake blood. It's pricey, but it kept the actors happy. Now, I've got to highlight how mind-blowing the effects are for each kill, and I, I know I can't show the one here, but trust me, they make you squirm. The realism is off the charts, and aside from this, the colour grading fits the theme really well. This film went for quality over quantity in the editing department, and for all the points I've thrown at you, I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. Now, very quickly, look at the like button, and I'm, I'm serious, genuinely. It should glow when I say the phrase, smash that like button, and if it didn't, I'll look a bit like an idiot. <laughs> But before we reach the end of this video, I want to say, please comment what aspects you enjoyed and what you didn't exactly as find as entertaining. And also, what did I miss? To conclude, the final score for No Country for Old Men is... 40! I hope you have an amazing and productive day. Be sure to follow my other social media in the links in the description, please. It helps out so much. And I hope to see you in the next video. Bye-bye!